uh, it is um, by Professor Santosh Ansumari from the Jawaharlal Nehru Center of the Advanced Science Research. And his talk title is Towards CFD at the Exascale. So, Santosh, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me a chance to speak here. So, what I would be talking today is essentially a demonstration of what the first speaker talked about. The first speaker talked about uh, how memory is becoming bottleneck, and we as a group, we're looking at a large scale fluid dynamics simulations from that point of view. And what we have done, uh, both from academic as well as uh, commercial perspective via this startup, in the, that scale where we, we see that there are lots of opportunity in the um, fluid dynamics to use uh, this move from beta scale to XS scale and some of the hurdles which we face and how we overcame, I will talk about that. So first, the motivation. Here, how a typical fluid dynamics solver behave and what are the different options is shown. So in uh, most of the fluid dynamics problem, there is a single parameter called Reynolds number which characterizes the flow strength. Here, I'm just showing a, a simplistic but realistic example how simulations behave. So this is the experimental result on the left and on the right, uh, sorry, in the middle, what is shown is how current generation of commercial tool behaves. This is a one level of uh, mm, compromise between a full simulations of actual physical equation and putting a little bit of modeling, which is called large eddy simulation, how that behave. And the essential issue is uh, simulations scale as RE power nine by four. And for Realistic system, we are talking about 10 power 5 to 10 power 6 Reynolds number, and that's the issue. And that's the reason mm, most of the practical codes are in this middle zone, while research codes have started to move along this side. And what are the applications? So one of the applications which we had in mind, where we chose AMD ROM uh, close to 1.5 petaflop system with 300 nodes, bandwidth of around 100 TV is the direct numerical simulations of car. And here RE is around 3 million because computing scale like RE power 3 by 4, we realize that even on this large system, mm -hmm. uh, this is the kind of RAM requirement and the kind of memory bandwidth we needed, even the theoretical memory bandwidth was something of this order. And that kind of uh, precluded us to use GPUs and among the Intel as well as AMD, what we found is that essentially, I will show you later some numbers that as the first speaker told, mm, uh, for many realistic uh, codes or uh, scientific codes at least, mm, the flop hardly matter and it's a bandwidth which start to limit the code. And there we, at least we found it to be suitable to go with the AMD because of this memory bandwidth. And this is one of the things which we wanted to highlight that we would prefer as a user more uh, systems which have better memory bandwidth rather than the better flop. This is another example or another class of example which we are in, uh, interested in. For many industrial applications, you want to actually look at uh, large scale reactive systems and which, which are, this is for example, a tower uh, where, uh, for carbon capturing. Similarly, for one of the project we were looking at is a gasifier where we look at the coal burning. So these are large systems where simulations can do a lot as you move from beta, uh, I mean, it start to become realistic around beta scale. And we needed to have a good quality code to do this kind of application. So I'll at the end show one applications of this type. The way we tackle is optimize the code because memory bandwidth as well as the flops start to become an issue, largely the memory bandwidth. We uh, look at the problem from three sides. One is the uh, physics. We look at the fluid dynamics. We look at the algorithmic improvement coming from the physics side. I'll just uh, show one slide along that. And then mathematical optimizations and then finally uh, hardcore computer optimization from the bandwidth. 
as a tool largely we concentrate on a method called lattice boltzmann method and finite difference so finite difference uh, most people are aware so i'm not talking about that but uh, in this lattice boltzmann uh, model the flow is represented by a simplistic molecular picture where there have, you have a bunch of particle which hop around one side to another in a simple cubic lattices they interact on a lattice node and then hop around so you can imagine from this that in the hopping it's just a memory transfer while when they interact it's lots of floating point operation and we try to improve this class of algorithm both by better implementation better physical model and some of the theoretical issues here around so for example what we found is that for the time discretization if one build a time stepper where one works with a time step which is in some sense guarantee that uh, entropy production is always positive that in technical term i would call as a discrete h theorem and we our our time steppers are in that sense uh, non linear it's not a fixed time step code and we could achieve a very large realistic system by using this kind of time step but if you are interested if, uh, this uh, paper describes it this methodology now the other part is a standard issue which is typically de dealt by code optimization and here we were looking at a slightly alternate solution so there are two kinds of uh, fluid dynamics code one which will use unstructured grid something like this other is a structured grid obviously this has a much more advantage if the memory bandwidth is an issue but this is mathematically more accurate so we wanted to and at the end in a practical code what we saw that it doesn't really matter which end you start with for very large scale codes both end up being giving same kind of performance so we were asking why accuracy and bandwidth utilization has to be orthogonal can we do something better can we have an structured grid which has better accuracy like this and which preserve the bandwidth as it is and the solution to this we found largely in the mm, uh, computer graphics literature so in place of using simple cubic grids we started using what i will uh, typically call is a body center cubic grid which can be understood as a cubic grid displaced by 45 degree and here you can see qualitatively why this should be better for the same number of grid point how a shape is better represented in by this so implementation wise it end up being like a simple structured grid on the other hand it can resolve the shapes in a way, way better uh, manner and that is evident for example in this picture this is a physics example where we show that it leads to four time reduction in the compute requirement now the compute part we found here an interesting aspect that the hopping step which is uh just memory transfer from one node to another is obviously dealt better by structure of array on the other hand the code also has a compute step where roughly 500 floating point operations happens and some uh, some algorithms would have around 1000 floating point operations so this is going to be mm, compute bound and here one would expect the array of a structure to give you better performance both step has two memory read operation and here is the performance what we saw on different architecture if we use aos in intel as well as amd platform we see that we can achieve with one uh, data structure ideal performance and by the other one we achieve the ideal performance in the other step here we again thought of rewriting the code based on the uh, physical principle when we look at the data movement one could see that the data movement is largely moving in uh, uh, in a lattice pattern so which we said the simple cubic body body center cubic and face center cubic pattern so which can be divided to create what i will call a hybrid data structure which is described in this paper soaos 
with the lack of time, I'm not going into the detail of this, but essential idea is follow the data movement pattern and create an hybrid structure. So in place of using a 4D array for a 3D ob object, we move to a 5D object where we uh, distinguish this five data movement patterns and which we are calling as OAOS. And here we saw that we started to get ideal memory performance and flop I'm not mentioning because we saw uh, on most of the hard hardware that it's irrelevant whether I'm using a high memory, uh, sorry, high flop or low flop. And for that reason, we ended up configuring a petascale cluster with AMD, uh, which has close to 100 terab uh, terabyte per second memory bandwidth. And that's the best we saw currently available in at least uh, as a commodity hardware. So with this, I will just show how, what kind of simulations which are possible. Sorry. So this is a coal gasification reaction. So essentially, this is a large one, uh, few meter column uh, in a petrochemical refinery where we are looking at the coal particle coming and reacting with the air to produce syngas. And this is a large scale industrial problem which we could actually solve with this kind of codes. So I'm, I'm not getting into the detail of this thing, but this is the kind of simulations which industry was looking for long. We are able to do largely because of this memory bandwidth optimization and a proper choice of hardware. So again, the physics here is this coal particles are coming from both end, going upward. While they are doing this, they are reacting to produce a gas which is used for electricity generation. And as I said, for car simulation, here is a car, a car simulation which Again, the physics of it, we are planning to put it somewhere else. Mm, uh, we are able to do a realistic car simulation in a direct manner, largely because of uh, this kind of bandwidth we are able to get and these data structure optimizations as well as the uh, grid optimizations which we are doing. With this, I would like to just mention few points. We also experimented in this code with mixed precision to accelerate because still to do a realistic car simulation, it takes around a month. So which is not, at least we need to go towards 10 petaflops. So we we explored HBM as well as uh, GPUs. One problem we have is the memory power card. Uh, memory power card in our opinion is still too low. Then. Uh, because of the second law of thermodynamics implemented in the code, we could actually work with a low precision, single precision algorithms. And what we realized that we don't have a good hardware support for half precision kind of thing. So these are some of the things as a user we would like to have in the hardwares. With this, I'll stop here. I'm just showing a drone simulation and I will take the questions. So this is a flow around a drone. Again, it's a highly computationally intensive process, which we are able to do largely because of this kind of mix of hardware optimization as well as software optimizations. So with this, I, I'd like to thank the much so there uh i see no question on the chat board so far is there any question okay so i have one question so there you're mainly uh, focusing on the memory bandwidth problem of the mm -hmm. direct and numerical solution or there are uh, even the lattice boltzmann so but you didn't mention so much about um uh, today's on the GPU, which is equipped with HBM2, much higher memory yeah. bandwidth than their 
uh, CPU multiple channel yeah. DDR5. So, is there any good, good result for it with uh, our performance by the GPU on these applications? Yeah. So the problem with the GPU, what we find, and the same with HBM2 uh, base system, experimental system is that even though uh, memory bandwidth is high, but the total memory capacity which I can build with such a system with the same amount of, is pretty low. And that right. is kind of, so if I want a 100 TB so of memory, memory to solve large scale industrial problems, I can't get 100 TB with uh, just GPUs. And that is kind of limiting us. I see. I see. So maybe that is also the same problem happens, you know, that um, today's, in my uh, understanding, today's only CPU, general purpose CPU mm -hmm. is HBM2 in the uh, Fugaku process, right, the Fujitsu. And maybe there are mm -hmm. other companies will follow with um, uh, HBM2 implementation on the CPU, but today only one CPU. So, but um, maybe you don't have a chance to use uh, that machine or by the crane. Oh, we would love to say. explore that. Yeah, yeah. So we would love to explore yeah, that so machine for this. Oh, really? So that um, uh, my, just uh, my suggestion is that it is good to test um, if you have any chance mm -hmm. with the HBM2 ready CPU. So there are uh, all other mm -hmm. vendors only provide the GPU with the HBM2. Okay, yeah. so but then so I, the I agree, GPU, I totally agree that. Kind of... So the performance Sorry. wise, again, we saw that SOAOS data structure is giving the performance as one would expect. Uh, we could reach the ideal performance, but again, I can't do much with that because of the system size requirement. I see. So I totally agree that um, today's HBM2 has a big problem about the capacity not just on the bandwidth. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, our time is uh, running, up, running up, so uh, thank you very much again for the, the great talk.